everyone, it's Steph with Tiny's Garden and today I have a plan to get all these Eucara in that I went on a shopping haul for a couple days ago and I wanted to plant these out. So these are all perennials, they're part sun perennials, they do find in shade as well which is pretty much the area I'm putting them in. They'll get a little sun but not a lot. I'm going to simply put some biotone starter fertilizer in the hole and cover them back up. So it's a slow release fertilizer that should allow them to get the nutrients they need. I need to figure out where I want to put them though. And the other thing I have to plant is that beautiful peony, I believe it's called Scarlet Heaven that I picked up the same day I picked these up. So what I'm gonna do first is go over my garden and place these in a pattern that I want. I think I might have to rearrange a couple things, but that's fine. So let me get that situated and then I'll take you through what I'm thinking. Let's do it. In case you didn't see that shopping haul video, I wanna go through the varieties with you. So this one's a Coral Bells. It's the common name for you grab. Don't say Wildberry and look how gorgeous these are. They're the biggest ones, beautiful. This I think is my favorite. Check those out with that silver glossy foliage is a Coral Bells Dulce. Get the tag out for you. Dulce Silver Gumdrop. And lastly, actually I got a couple more for you. Isn't this pretty and so unique? I've never seen this one before. This is called the Coral Bells Black Forest Cake. Such a unique one. Look at that dark foliage with those poppin' blooms at the top. Love it. This could be my personal favorite too. I go back and forth. The Dulce Spearmint. I've already got three planted in my garden over here. Let me show you quickly. And full disclosure, if you saw my Cosmo and Xenia video, you heard about the coyote feasting. This is the remnant. So and sorry that's there, but I'm not touching it. <laughs> We've got the Dulce Spearmint right here. And I just love how it looks in the garden with those leaves. I think it's such a unique, pretty green and the juxtaposition with the bright pink blooms. So this is on the list for today. Let's get them put in order. Okay, I have now placed them all. I'm not gonna tell you how long that took me, but it took me a little while. And let's take a look at where I've placed and why. Let's start over here by the stop sign. This is the right side of our property, right side of the driveway. And I've placed the silver gumdrops here because I think the, the silvery purple with the pink blooms at the top goes pretty nicely paired with these tulips back here. I forget the name of these. I didn't have an exact match, but I'll put what I think it is on the screen. Those are just really coming into their own now. So they're a late blooming tulip, which means that these would probably come up before the back ones. So I think that'll work well together. Another reason for this placement is these smaller tulips behind here are my earliest blooming tulips. They're definitely faded now. Those are the Kaufmannia tulips. So what will be nice is that as those fade, these here should really grow and get bigger. And then these up here are Stella de Oro daylilies that have yellow blooms, but that happens later in the summer. So we've got some multi-season interest here and layering that I think will look and marry with all the elements in here pretty well. Now coming over to the other side. Here I've got some explaining to do so you can see what's going on here. I've got these grasses, which don't get much bigger than this, but then I've got another one down here that I planted. Because our first year in the house, I planted those with some things in this bare center here which did not work and did not come back so i'm going to rearrange i'm going to move this one which isn't doing as well here anyways over 
in a spot right here. Those are Black Eyed Susans. So we'll set it there over the summer. It'll get overshaded, but that's okay for now. These are a drift of foxglove coming through here. These are seedlings that I grew from seeds this year. So we'll see if they flower this year. Probably not, but next year they should come back there biennial, which means they'll put on a lot of green growth this year, then flower next year. And those get pretty tall. So behind the foxglove here, I've put a group of three. I really like the groups of three for this Eucara. This one here, again, is the biggest one. This is that wildberry, I believe it was called. One here, and then one just past this light here for a couple reasons. They're gonna get pretty big, so I don't want them too close together. But I've also put in them in a spot where there's a daffodil that's gonna fade back. Here's a big daffodil that's gonna fade back. Also another daffodil that's gonna fade back. So it'll help kind of hide those daffodils as they start to lose their blooms and go turn to yellow before I cut them back. Also, these are the biggest ones, so size-wise, it'll hold its own with a little space between that foxglove there. And it's good for a mid-bed placement instead of in the back or the front. And I also like how the purple is popping with all of the grain. I think that looks pretty nice. Which brings me to this spot up here where I'm moving this from. These three I'm going to have mirror off of this side my group of three, right where these tulips and this grass is. So I'll put one back here, one up front, and one behind. I just haven't cleared that out yet, so that's why they're not setting there. And this is some blue lobelia, I believe, that was here before we moved in. I think that's also part of what this could be. Those aren't doing very well though, so I may pull them at some time too. And now we're in the back of this bed where the wild berry is, and we're gonna keep coming back here. So around the whole bed, tulips are up in there coming around the tree. Right here is where I've placed the black forest cake. And this is the smallest one. However, the only thing beside it is hostas, and these are not gonna get too big until they bloom, if I want them to bloom later in the season. And this helps me out because last year I planted a nice annual display through this area, but I think with those holding their own there, I don't necessarily have to put anything in that space, which is where perennials come in handy because they'll come back year after year after year. And I also like that really deep, dark, purpley, almost burgundy black leaf bouncing off of all the different grains up here. I think it allows this to really shine and be evident in the bed with those pink berries popping, which is what I want. So that's the plan of the attack. First thing I need to do is move that blue grass to its new home where I want it, and then we'll start to get everything put in. As far as the peony, I haven't gotten that figured out yet. I might hold off on that today. We'll see how much I get done over here. And with these tulips here, I think I'm gonna pull all of my tulips up by the bulb this year. Some tulips come back every year. I had a couple that came back this year around this big tree and up front that were there from last year. But overall, tulips don't necessarily come back each year. Again, some do, but I think I'm gonna do a totally new spread, totally new color palette next year, so these little tulips are gonna be ripped up here. It's okay, it's okay. Ooh. Come on! Okay, that shovel was a severe failure. So I gotta find something else to get that out. We'll try a pitchfork here. Whew. 
There we go. Okay, here we are. Doesn't that look better? I like how it coordinates with that you girl over there, but I love how it's mirroring this side as well. And there's a little bit of space. These are a little farther forward than these, but it kind of creates a mirror effect on both sides of the driveway. I like it. I like it. Now, when I'm planting perennials, I place them in the spot I think I want them in their pots for a variety of reasons. One, I want to see how it looks there. I want to be able to move it around, try different things, which I definitely did with all of these. Two, it's a perennial, so it'll come back year after year after year, and I really don't want to have to dig it up and replant it if I don't like where I put it. You can totally do that, but I don't like to undo work I've done. So, case in point, I didn't love to move that blue grass, but it needed to happen to make the garden bed look cohesive and how I wanted it. So, those are my reasons. Okay, let's get these all planted in the ground. made it got them all in got them all planted took me about three hours but i'm done so let's take a look at the finished product here and so far i'm really happy with the placement and i love how you peek through and you can actually see those black forest in the back as well but i think the spearmint and the wild berry complement each other really well. And of course, the mirror of the spearmint here with the spearmint over here kind of bridges the two flower beds together really nicely. There's the black forest cake along with all the hostas here. And peeking through, you can see the wild berry in the background which I think is a fun little sight. But these guys look great up here. I'm really happy I placed them on this side of the service berry tree where it's surrounded by green. I think it makes them really pop and gives something to this garden bed that wasn't there before. And last but certainly not least, we come to the silver gumdrop euchra planted through the front here in front of those beautiful tulips, which I think I'll just plant more of next year. This one's a little close to the hosta, but overall it definitely still works in that silvery purple foliage. I just adore it. really adds something to this front garden bed space, a little punch there. I'm really happy with that. I believe my next garden goal is going to be to add another punch of purple in this bed, either where that squirrel was laid to rest or over here in the arch between the sedum and hydrangeas, just to marry with the purple that is seen in this bed and balance that out a little bit. Again, those eucharists are sun to part sun. I spaced them a little over 12 inches apart. Each of them are a little different height-wise and width-wise, but overall I think they'll be fine at that spacing. The wild berry for sure is the tallest, the black horse cake the smallest, and then right in the middle, I believe, is the spearmint. So they'll all fill in really nicely in each spot that they're at and give me a good show. 
every year because again perennials come back year after year after year and that'll do it for this video everybody thank you for coming along and planting those perennials specifically euchras out in the landscape with me please comment below and let me know what your favorite variety of euchra is i'm curious those plants have really grown on me i hope you found it helpful and if so please like this video by hitting the thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribe to my channel to follow along with all things garden we'll see you in the next one and as always happy planting bye